All right, today is Thursday, December 3rd. Uh, this is Microsoft DevSync. Welcome. And uh, we're going to, again, go through and do a quick update on everyone's status and check in if there's any blockers. Um, I'll go ahead and start today, because why not? Um, I'll give an update for Kevin. Uh, he got one working SJ201 Rev4 board uh, out yesterday to Ken, so Ken will give us a report on that, hopefully. But uh, in reviewing that with him this morning, uh, Kevin, that is, uh, the functionality of the board, uh, everything seems to be working. Um, there are a couple of little tweaks, like things like the silk screen, and maybe some of the, the mounting holes might, might need to move. We might need to put the microphones just a smidge further apart because they're not exactly 71 millimeters apart for some reason. Um, but uh, nothing major, uh, so everything looks good so far. Uh, but we'll have to, uh, um, you know, make sure that the 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 major functions that we haven't yet tested are the uh, being able to program the flash on both the XMOS and the AT Tiny uh, through the Pi rather than using these, uh, you know, one-time programmers uh, uh, hardware utilities. So, um, so that's coming along nicely. Um, We've had a couple of good conversations with our uh, hopeful fulfillment uh, partner, and uh, that's coming along as well. Um, the patent litigation uh, annoyingly continues, and um, that's about it. That's it. Uh, Chris Baer. Yeah, so I spent today uh, beginning my work on some of the metrics. And as I started coding the metrics, I realized that um, I had written code for some of the metrics that had been populated, so um, it felt a little silly. But I was able to um, get those metrics put on the uh, Grafana site with all the rest of the account metrics. So um, I think they still need to be, I think there's still some tweaking we need to do, and Michael and I will talk about that. But, um, but they're you know, probably somewhat representative, at least. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what I did yesterday, uh, or just today. Um, tomorrow we'll be um, possibly tweaking uh, some of these numbers a little bit, depending on how my conversation with Michael goes, and then starting to look at um, some more of the membership stuff we talked about. Today. All right, great. Um, let's go over to Ken. Yeah, so uh, I was working on uh, the training server, and I figured out what my script is and my documentation is and where the hook is. But once I get a new request, I will integrate that and then uh, I moved on to the uh, PC version of the build, and the camcorder is not up yet. And uh, I worked a little bit with Kev trying to get the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO configured properly. I have a working version somewhere, one of these devices that's working the way it should, I just haven't been able to reproduce that necessary template. And I did verify that I can, you know, take a fresh image of PC, which is old, um, and just go into the uh, core and do a uh, switch to the uh, hardware support branch and do an update pull and get the latest code. So worst case, that would work as an update to the code. Um, and we could run the service if we had to. So that being said, I'm sure Canico will come through and everything will be fine. Uh, finally, about an hour ago, maybe a little less, I got my Rev4 board. I'm very excited. Um, it's laid out beautifully. It looks really good. It's sleek. It's smaller than the other one. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, it's got this big old fat chip with this coil on it. I'll, uh, I'll start working uh, on this full time. Um, uh, this documentation Kevin sent so far, I'm sure we'll have a lot of back and forth. Um, and, you know, I'll see if maybe the coil chip just isn't showing up at the surface level, but it's in the tree somewhere and things like that. Uh, I don't have any idea how we'll point TensorFlow to it to use it, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to worry about getting our code running on it and it working and getting a set of hardware drivers um, in so the novel will be there for this. And I suspect that everything is kind of new, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure the GPIOs uh, are still just GPIOs with different assignments and stuff like that. So 
Uh, I suspect by this time tomorrow I'll have a, uh, a better update on, on the rest of this year. And that's what I'm looking for. So we haven't announced the coral ship yet, right? So we're going to have to some of the, some of his thing out? Yeah, now twice. <laughs> well, just because I've got it doesn't mean they're getting it. This is a beta board, right? <laughs> All right. Um, that is very true. Okay. Uh, Great. Yeah. Uh, if you run into any problems, Ken, uh, be sure to you know get in touch with Kevin. Uh, he's pretty responsive. I'm sure you know. Oh, Kevin's awesome. He's not the problem. I just need to go through all the stuff he sent me in the documentation and get up to speed on it. And, you know, experiment. But yeah. Uh, okay. No problem, Kevin. And obviously the um, action button is in the middle of the ledge now. Which is cool. Uh, and I'll probably want to figure out. Right away, I have to. I don't care about reflashing the firmware as much as reflashing the recent time firmware. Right. Uh, let me see if I can figure that out as well, because that would be a big thing for us. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I'll be busy probably through the weekend on this rest of it. Okay, well, check with Kevin on that as well, because I think he's also looking into that, so don't need to duplicate that effort. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. Okay, cool. All right, thanks. Uh, Derek. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, today I was basically um, well. First of all, we had the conversation um, that, that uh, Michael mentioned with a lot of the team um, talking about uh, the fulfillment and kitting out the parts for the um, <clears throat> for the the dev board kit uh, that promised to be a Kickstarter. And you know, going a bit of overall logistics and stuff like that. So that got kind of kicked off. Um, they've got the the parts there, the all the kit parts. So you got an idea of what we're talking about now, and you can get that quoted, and we can move forward there. Um, and then uh, the rest of the time, I've been basically doing a, a couple of things. I've been working with um, a better placement for the camera uh, in the laser cut design, and then getting the audio chamber um, to print better by tweaking some, some stuff to it. I'm actually still trying to get it to print in just one part. Uh, I think I'm pretty, pretty close. I'm hoping to solve all of Josh's problems there. <laughs> um, he's having, having problems printing it, and if he's having problems printing it, we send it out, we'll, we'll try it prompts too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been where I'm at. Okay, great. Um, and let's see, uh, Josh, you have anything here. you want to add? I'm here. I just I wandered off to the, to the patio. The, the weather here is a bit rough. So. Um, the, let's see. Okay, so I've been working to get these prints. Um, I don't think the printer settings are going to resolve it. Um, the goal is to get something that prints with no supports, um, as ideally as Eric said, as a single piece. Um, and uh, here's all my failures. Uh, ideally, as a single piece and reliably, and that way, you know, we can certainly use our friends at uh, uh, whatever the print farm company is. But we can also put the printers that we've got in house into production and print. Um, there's enough room on these print beds to print four at a time, so we can start getting some. The audio enclosures out. Uh, we settled on three SKUs for the for the shipping of the Mark Mark One Dev Mark Two Dev Kit. Uh, so we're excited about that, um, and we're starting to to work through it. They said the relationship with the with the fulfillment company that we're hoping can be a long term partnership for us to do fulfillment both in the United States and internationally. Uh, let's see a little bit of correspondence, and then uh, working with Johnny and Derek and uh, and Chris and. Uh, on the getting things moving for the for the Mark II dev kit, um, our goal is to, and this is our goal, not our commitment. I don't know if Dez is on the line or not, but um, I guess he's not. Uh, it, it's our goal, but not our commitment, to get shipping labels printed for these things uh, at the end of December and actually drop them physically into the shipping, uh, the global logistics shipping system in. The first week of January, um, and then the, the next question becomes is getting to the the actual Mark IIs, um, which will very closely resemble these dead kits. Um, so that's where I am 
today. I'm kind of a little scattered and all over the place, I'll be honest with you. Oh, and I came up with the idea for making a children's book. So I'm very excited about that. It's a children's book that we it, make smart it encourages speakers. Children, it encourages children to to, um, to do what all heroes and stories do, and, and that is annihilate trolls. And so it's a, it's a children's book where the, the child is, is assaulted, um, extorted, you might say, by a patent troll. And, you know, a, variety, a vast majority of the book is, is a, a visual exploration of the consequences that you could impose on that patent troll in a realm of fantasy where there is no fuel of law. And we're looking at maybe putting a, a, a voodoo doll at the back so that the, the children can can experiment with their own methods of punishment uh, towards pet controls. Um, I'm saying that only half joking with one of the one of the clarifications I've asked for from Michael on the funding side of things is is possibly doing some novelty type projects uh, to fund the patent suit. And so, you know, we talked a, a little bit about maybe doing a a, a line of paper products with uh, the patent trolls logo on them. Um, but then also a, uh, uh, you know, a, a troll book. And, and before anybody says that stupid, uh, can anybody on the line name the most prolific and successful entrepreneur of our time? Anyone? You were? Charles so Montgomery? <laughs> no, I am, I am not successful by the definitions of entrepreneurship. But there is a certain... <laughs> There is a certain gentleman in, in California who revolutionized both the automotive and the space travel market. And I'd like to point out his latest venture, The Boring Co. He funded it by selling hats, of which I have one, and flame shirts, which I have none. But the point being that he used a series of novelty products as part of a, a marketing effort and a finance effort to push through a new operation. And this is a guy who calls VCs and says, hey, I need $10 million and gets to check the same day. So um, I think we should consider it. Anyway, that is my little spiel. I will shut up now. It'd be nice to uh, audio version of that book with Samuel L. Jackson reading it. It'd be nice to distribute that book with one of his flamethrowers. Yes, I mean, we could, just, we could distribute the book with weapons <laughs> from which you could actually actually perform some of these but we could go wrong actions that we envision. <laughs> um, but I, I, I suspect the federal judge might might frown on that. However, I really, 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 really look forward to reading their filings about the children's book that we published. That you know that they are so scared and 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 um, uh, shaking in their booties about that they they feel that we need legal sanctions because this children's book is, has hurt their feelings and and made them feel as though the internet hates them. So anyway. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing, Josh. Um, all right, so that's it. I know uh, Emily, Emily, and I have some following up to do on the PCBA side of things. Uh, we're going to get together about that soon, um, and I think that's it. So we missed Gez today, uh, but hopefully we'll see him again tomorrow. He did post uh, his update on the Matterhorn's channel. If anyone wants to read it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I haven't been uh, able to keep up with that. Can you uh, give us a quick update, uh, Chris? Yeah, I can share what he's done. Uh, so he met with some of the Australian distributors who are interested and impressed by the SJ201 design. Um, he got that 8 gigabyte Pi 4 and said there was no luck there, so apparently two years meant nothing. Um, Make some tweaks to the new enclosure code after chatting about it with Ken and getting it working on the old DevOps QT image. And um, we started having a look at what how the how plugin implementation might take. Um, nothing exciting there, he says, to report yet. He's looking into it a little bit when he's only waiting for paid orders. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for catching that. Uh, all right, well, that's it for today, and uh, we'll talk again tomorrow.